Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah and I'm here with my best friend and she's been on the podcast one time before this, but Mireya is here. I Hello. was trying to see your last name and I was about to say <laughs> just, best but it's friend. Gist, what? right? You can't even say my it's name gist. properly? It's Gist with a hard G. That's so embarrassing. Shows how much <laughs> I really know her. Uh, but anyway, Mireya is on here because Morgan just got back from his trip and my dad's actually counseling someone. So we kind of had to have you. <laughs> Plan C. Not that I wanted you because I was kidding. <laughs> we always have fun, but back we always up. remind people that we are not pastors and we are not trying to take. We're not trying. To you're be. not trying to take the the pastor seat, right? Even though that's the pastor mm, seat. You know, I mean, well, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not. I Submit, promise. woman, please. <laughs> no, I'm but truly, we understand that we have to be under authority and under men. So. We are not trying to get up at or anything like that. Nope. And men, you can also watch this. I know some men like in the chat, like get really weird when it's just three women. They're like, can I like be in this? No, like this is good for if we you are, <laughs> if you have, you know, sisters or if you have um, just girls that you have to be around, you have to, you have to be around the girls, but this is good for anyone. And so we're going to be talking with a guest today who she is an author a speaker she's a spoken word poet which is really cool she's also an ambassador for the whosoevers that's with ryan reese and calvary and she is the founder of beauty has no size she's a plus size model and she's done a ted talk as well which is awesome and we're excited because she's going to be sharing her testimony today. She also goes to God Speak Calvary Chapel with Pastor Ron McCoy, and she is with us today to share her testimony. So without further ado, it's my honor to welcome Christina. Christina, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. Well, we're blessed because you are going to be sharing your testimony with us, and we like to always remind our guests that this is a conversation. So we... Me and me today, I like to talk. Yes, we you know, do. We're pretty, we're pretty wild. Pretty so chatty. Christina will be sharing her testimony. And then if we jump in and have a question or anything like that, then we might interrupt you. So, <laughs> but it'll be do fun. It. And <laughs> it's yeah. exciting just being able to meet you just now. But I feel like we already are, we're all sisters in Christ. So Amen. it's going to be a great time. Yeah. But yeah. can you share with our listeners, maybe just to start off with your testimony, where you were born? So I was born in Riverside, California. Hmm. Nice. And so did you grow up like in the church or what did that look like for you? Yeah. So I grew up in the church and I grew up in a Christian home, Um, you know, Christian home, like so many people, right? You know, just, Mm -hmm. I guess, with the values of wanting that. And um, I came from a home that was to build... To be honest with you, I think my parents did the best with what they were given. You know, Mm -hmm. like I had a mom that grew up in a village in Malaysia where there was Mm -hmm. so much abuse and so Mm -hmm. much like rape and so much just crazy stuff. And Mm -hmm. so for her, when, you know, when people are hurt, like hurt people, hurt people. So growing up, like my mom towards us, it was like she had, if her heart was like a trash bag, right? She had years and years of trauma and verbal Mm -hmm. abuse and physical abuse and sexual abuse. And so for us growing up, it was like all of that pain got put out on her kids, you know, and her mm-hmm. husband and, and me. I'm one of the older ones. So it was just a lot of like verbal abuse and physical abuse and emotional abuse for my mom. And God's totally restored my mom and me and my mom have a great relationship mm-hmm. now. God. And she's like apologized. But it was one of those things that was very damaging at a young age. And a few years before I was born, my parents adopted um, my one of my older siblings and this sibling growing up um, raped me, mm-hmm. you know, when I was a child. And so as a young girl, experiencing rape by the two females in my life that were supposed to love and nurture me mm-hmm. really shaped my identity in a very, like, damaging way. You know, there was just – I remember being a young girl and just um, wanting to wear baggy clothes, you know, yeah. because I was just so ashamed of my body. I didn't like to be attractive because mm-hmm. being attractive was, like, wrong attention and even like my dad, you know, my dad's like six foot three and his whole family, like all the women are like six feet tall. And I didn't grow up around them, but that gives you an idea of like, as a young girl, like I developed into my body at a very young age, you know, like yeah. I got my period in fifth grade. I was five, nine in the fourth grade. Like mm-hmm. I just, wow. you know, 
people always thought I was older. So I was experiencing trauma. Mm -hmm. Then I would get people looking at me weird. And so as a young girl, I hated girls. And so I started hanging out with boys at school. And I struggled with my sexual identity up until I was 14 years old in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I, I was boy crazy. But in my mind, with the rape that was happening to me, I remember just being like, what is this? Like, yeah. and I would watch like, gay porn, you know, mm-hmm. because I was just like, Oh, like, is, is this normal? Like, you mm-hmm. know, and even just talking about yeah. our kids and our culture today, like some of these kids are confused, because yeah. it's like, they've had trauma, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. it's true. and they've been abused. And so in my as a, as a little girl, I was just trying to make sense of like, okay, what was happening? And then my body was having this biological reaction, obviously, to the porn I was watching. And so there, I was just was a very confused kid up until I was 14. Yeah. Um, I remember even being like, I want to go to the Navy SEALs one day. Like, I wanted to play football mm-hmm. in high school. Like, I struggled, I guess, with, you know, mm-hmm. even in Ryan, my stories in Ryan Reese's book, you know, I guess living that homosexual lifestyle without physically crossing boundaries with girls. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. just like emotionally and mm-hmm. mentally and spiritually. And, um, I didn't struggle with it like after I was 14 years old. It was just like the confusion because the rape was happening up until that point. So I yeah. think like during that time I was, you know, and I, the Lord has a beautiful way of restoring that. Amen. But um, as a young girl, you know, just dealing with body image, like every girl does, like a lot of girls that have experienced like rape or trauma, they often mm-hmm. struggle with um, feeling like their body is being taken from them. Right. Like mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. losing control. So a way to get that control back for me, I didn't have access to drugs or alcohol like other people could, Mm -hmm. but I remember just trying to control my body that felt like it was out of control. Like Mm -hmm. I started like starving myself. I started, you know, trying to lose weight. Like I was taking like laxatives, like working Mm -hmm. out for hours and hours and hours. And my parents just thought that I loved sports. And so they were like, oh, she's just working out again. And it developed from anorexia into bulimia going Mm -hmm. into middle school And then high school, you know, I went to a high school that was very like affluent because a lot of Mm -hmm. people from the beach areas were moving to where I, I, I lived, but more in the hills. Mm -hmm. So everything was very materialistic, but it was like the California image of beauty, which was like a Victoria's Secret model, you know, Mm -hmm. which even Victoria's Secret models can't measure up to that image. Like no Mm -hmm. one can, you know, so feeling like, okay, I need to be this size or I need to look like this in order Mm -hmm. Um, to be good enough for a guy like or to fit in with the girls at school or whatever Mm, right and so I remember from a young girl just hating myself so Mm. much you know that just with like the rape and just with the verbal abuse and even the boys at school like every guy I ever liked they just were like oh well she's not really our type and so I always felt like well it wasn't enough for whatever boy yeah and so I wanted going- to ask you that. Sorry for cutting you off. But I wanted to ask you that because that's a big thing we see in like our society now with homosexuality, transgender, bi. See, when I was a kid, I it wasn't that long ago. I'm only 24, but I I remember being the tomboy. I loved playing with the boys. I had my brothers, and I would dress like a boy and. I played sports and I beat all the boys. Like I played basketball growing up in high school and played club. So I would be told by guys like, well, she's a lesbian because she hasn't dated anyone. And I was taller. I'm not as tall as Mireya. Mireya is six foot <laughs> I'm here. I'm six foot, yep. But um, I'm like 5'10". So it yeah. was just like growing up, if I was, especially now how it is now, I would be considered like, oh, no, like you should become a lesbian because mm-hmm. – you only yep. attract that type. So I played basketball too. And all yep. my friends and everyone, they were lesbians. And the crazy yeah. thing is when I would ask them their story like you, literally it was 10, ti- 10 times out of 10. It wasn't. And I'm sure it's maybe nine times out of 10 what it really is, like stats wise. But yeah. they all said something had happened to them when they were younger. They were molested. Yeah. They were raped. Um mm-hmm. Even things in school, like this one girl I was with, she was so good. She ended up playing D1. But oh. I was always telling her, I'm like, why do you have a girlfriend? Like, why are you doing this? Like, she was a Christian. I was like, you know this is wrong. And she was like, well, because no guys like me. And mm-hmm. I need love. Like, she was saying that. Yeah. But she's like, no guys want to date me. She's like, I like guys. But she's like, but mm-hmm. no guys like me. And mm-hmm. so it just broke my heart seeing what these athletic girls were going through and these girls that were this – style not what the other girls are so can you maybe share what would you say to the girls now 
that mm. are maybe more tomboy and because that's me Mireya now yeah. like yeah. we still are we're very girly we love that stuff but we're like we still like we love playing sports mm -hmm. and all these things yeah. but nowadays you're told if you are in if you're doing that stuff mm. oh maybe like you actually were born to be gay and like girls mm -hmm. so we're seeing that with girls even young girls that we see with youth group mm -hmm. and stuff they're struggling with their identity like maybe something has mm -hmm. happened to them but some have supposedly haven't even but what would you say like to those girls or for us as leaders how do we if we see they're going down that direction because they're told in school like get a sex change like do this but they're like inside mm -hmm. you can even tell they know it's wrong mm -hmm. so like what oh, what is always. some advice that you would give them maybe that Christina as you were a young girl like what would have you want someone or an adult to do or help in any way yeah you know I think even for me it all boiled down to like identity you know what I'm saying like yeah. I remember just like even to this day like my dad you know even listening to the my um you know the interview I did with Pastor Rob you know for my mm -hmm. church like my dad invited our abuser back in our home last year. And even mm. that, the enemy was like, see, Christina, you're not worth fighting for. You're not this, wow. you're not that, you know, mm. but because my identity is in Christ and the Lord mm. really affirmed that as a, at a young age, like even a good friend of mine, who's a Calvary youth pastor here in California, like we thought we were going to get married like five years ago, you know, like oh. we were good friends. We did a lot of uh, ministry together. Like people would always be like, you guys, it would be a great team. We were two very different people, you know? But mm -hmm. I remember just, um, and he just got married and we're like still good friends. But I remember like for a long time, I struggled with being like, well, I don't feel like the Calvary Chapel pastor's wife, like mold, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was just yeah. like, dude, like, especially the California version, which is very <laughs> like yeah. this big and, you know, blonde, <laughs> mm -hmm. not, you know, that, that's just what it is. And so, yeah, and yeah. it was like, you know, and so I remember just being like, God, I don't fit that. So I even struggled with like being like, God, like, I don't feel like an, I'm enough, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. but throughout like my entire life, God has always reminded me that number one, like the manliest man of all time, which is Christ, you know, came <laughs> and pursued me and loved Amen. me and fought for me. Mm -hmm. So even now at this point in my life, um, God is, has been stirring my heart for like, you know, marriage and for like stuff. And I believe that time is going to be coming for me soon with mm -hmm. who he has for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but even today, you know, my, I have a counselor that is based out of Compton, California. She's an African American woman, you know, who's just like on fire for the Lord <laughs> and she keeps it real with me, you know, like I just have <laughs> gone through crazy stuff. And so I'm even processing this with her and her, t her reminding me like Christina, regardless of whether whoever God has for you or, or whether regardless of a guy you might be interested in the future pursues you or doesn't. Like, don't measure your worth and how mm. valuable you are, or how worthy you are. She's like, Christ has, you've already been pursued. You've already been Amen. fought for. You've already been, um, like, you wear, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Mm. And that word is, like, the same word. It's, like, a, it's, like, almost, like, used for, like, um, like an engagement ring. You know, she's like, you mm. have already been, like, you Amen. are a bridegroom of Christ. And so Amen. I live from that place now knowing that even for every girl because I think every girl it's like we always have this dream of we want prince we want someone to fight for us we want someone yeah, to be like <laughs> you're amazing you know and you're worth mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. but I, I've kind of come to a place where I'm just like Lord you've already done that for me so even though mm -hmm. spiritual fathers have dropped the ball even though people have mm -hmm. dropped the ball, my own father has dropped the ball the Lord's mm -hmm. never dropped the ball and Amen. I think mm -hmm. a lot of girls I meet to this day if I'm being completely honest with you I still get more girls that hit on me than boys. Mm. And that's something that enemy it was constantly like, mm. this is who you will always be. Mm. And I haven't struggled with that since I was 14 mm. and I'm 31 now, you know? And so mm. the enemy still always tries to go after me and is just mm -hmm. like, you know, that's in and out of church that happens. Yeah. And I'm literally yeah. just like, what in the world, dude, you know? Mm. And especially with my friend, like five years ago when I was just, we, I waited for four years for him to pursue me and he never mm. did. Mm. And I struggled with the lie of, am I worth being pursued? Mm. And so, you know, but the Lord has affirmed that. And just with girls, just realizing that the best thing you could do is just point. Cause a lot of it is brokenness within their homes, right? Their father mm -hmm. dropped the ball. They were yeah. abused. 
maybe their mom wasn't around. So girls need nurture. So they might be looking for that in another girl, which is yeah. what I struggled with, you know, because mm-hmm. when you look at lesbian relationships, there's always a masculine one and a feminine yep. one, right? Mm-hmm. The masculine one always takes on the role of, you know, the walls and everything. And they mm-hmm. look for that nurture in another girl. And then that girl who's a more feminine one will often look for that nurture and a more masculine girl because maybe her dad dropped the ball. You know what I'm saying? There's always yeah. some. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Like, it's just so interesting. And so yeah. for you guys, it's really like, and it's so crazy. We live in a culture now that it's not even politically correct to counsel people out of this mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. true. Yeah. It's true. You know, so that it's like you pointing them to their identity in Christ is the biggest thing. You know, Mm -hmm. that they're loved, that just reminding them like of who they are. And it's not about them fixing the way that they dress. It's really a transformation of the inside out. Mm -hmm. Like I had, Mm -hmm. for example, a lot of like good spiritual moms in my life that God brought to really kind of nurture my femininity that had kind of died over time, you know. And the best thing to do is to surround those girls with even like, I know there's you, but even like a really good, like someone from women's ministry that can come alongside and just love on them. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like like a, yeah. like a healthy spiritual mother figure. Cause that's really what they crave mm-hmm. and just point them, tell the speak truth to them, point them to the word. And honestly, it's just about identity. Like it sounds so simple, but the more I put my identity in the Lord and I'm reminded of my identity, the Lord brings clarity to the confusion and it Amen. is confusion from the enemy. And so oh, pray yeah. for the confusion. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. And just teach them, you know, we are made in the image of God, just like everything that you're doing is in the word is the best thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not exactly like a one size fits all. Sometimes it's different. A girl might be really mad at her uncle or dad or brother for abusing her. So she tries to go for women. So you counsel her in that area, you know, mm-hmm. you know, just who God is as your father and just, you know, whatever. Or if a girl's mom dropped the ball, bring a healthy mm-hmm. mother figure in and love her in that place, you know? So find the place where their brokenness is and then go there. Mm. Yeah. That's good. That's and good. I love that advice because for me, sometimes I'm the type where I'm like, I just want like an answer. Like, what do <laughs> I do? But what God's been really speaking to me is like, Mariah, you need the Holy Spirit to give you discernment because you, we, every situation is different. Mm-hmm. You can't just assume, oh yeah, they were molested or raped. That's what happened. And I'm just going to deal with it this way. It's like, mm-hmm. Maybe that didn't happen to them. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was just exposure something. Exposure to pornography. Well, yeah, exposure to pornography. Mm-hmm. Or another thing is this one little girl, she was saying, girls at school are just mean. Yeah. And she's like, I just don't like girls. I just like mm-hmm. being with the boys. So then it comes off innocent. Like, oh, I just like hanging out with the boys. But then when you get into the world, then they're like, oh, well, then you should start, you know, then liking girls. But then in their mind as a little kid, they're like, I wasn't thinking that. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to play with the boys. Like, that's how I was in Mm -hmm. school. But now it's like being pushed. Mm -hmm. And I love how you said that, is that now it's everyone has to be so PC that the church, which we're meant to do, we're we're supposed to help these people out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, 1 Corinthians 7, it says, such were some of you. Mm -hmm. You were adulterers. You were fornicators. You were um, homosexuals. But now what they're being told is like, oh, no, you'll, that'll be with you forever. That's who I always am. Yeah, that's who I am. They put that as their identity instead of, like you said, their identity in Christ. And that makes me sad because our sexuality, whether you're, you know, you, you're you the biblical way, like as a woman, you like a man, It that shouldn't that shouldn't be our identity. So why are we yeah. celebrating it yeah. when homosexuals are making that their identity, their everything? That's not how it should be in Christ. And I just love like how when we were talking about it, it's like, christ he can like when you're in christ you're a new creation like Mm -hmm. and i i like how you're saying too because it's like it's not saying you're not going to be tempted with it like what you're saying other people are like hey christina like the world would say maybe you know maybe you have the gay gene you know i don't know but it's like no that's from the enemy like you said he's the father of confusion he's Mm -hmm. the one who wants to bring that but we know that that's not where your identity is it's not in and and you can be free from it it's like till the day we die will be tempted with certain things like the enemy is going to, especially because he knows girls, certain people are vulnerable to that. Mm-hmm. So he'll tempt them. But that doesn't mean we have to give in. The Bible says that with temptation, yeah. there's always a way of escape. Mm-hmm. So 
We don't yeah. have to get into that, but were you going to say something? Um, yeah, actually, to build off of that. So, I mean, I think uh, the root issue um, of a lot of things yeah. is just our way of thinking. It's a battle of the yeah. minds, honestly, is what's going yeah. on in society. You have yeah. the world speaking into you. You have, you know, just yeah. um, media, etc. Um, yeah. But as Christians, we're called to think biblically. And so yeah. we need to know the word. Yeah. We need to renew our mind in the word. And so like yeah. First Corinthians, talks, Paul talks about taking every thought captive and making yeah. it obedient to Christ. It's not just taking it captive, but making it obedient to Christ. And yeah. he talks about renewing your mind in Romans 12 so that we are able to discern and test the will of God. Um, and it's just, in Philippians, he talks about thinking on what is pure, what is good, what is right, what is holy. And so we have all these these um, commands that begin with yeah. the mind. And so I guess yeah. my question for you would be, um, so you mentioned that you hadn't uh, struggled with that since you were 14. Was there a moment um, that it was just sort of a, a click, like you read something in scripture or someone spoken to you? Because I know you said you were raised in a Christian home. Um, so I'm sure there was that confliction of like what you're feeling and what you're hearing from the world as opposed to what the word of God says. Um, so is was there like a moment? Was it like a process of continual mm. renewal of the mind to this day? Do you still... Um, consistently, I mean, we all have to yeah, consistently no, renew no. our minds in the word of God. Um, yeah. But what was that process like for you? Just like reprogramming the way you think, essentially. I think the biggest thing for me was like, I remember, especially in middle school, I don't know if like my struggles changed from like, at the time, you know, struggling with my sexual identity to then dealing with like bulimia and like all mm -hmm. this stuff, you know, but a lot of, but even through that whole time, like I was in the word, you know, like I was mm. at youth group, like mm. I was hearing and I just feel like the Lord over time. Cause it's almost like when people wear, um, like glasses, like almost like when mm. people don't have glasses on, it's kind of like blurry, mm -hmm. but it was almost like God through his word, put like correction lenses on it. Mm -hmm. It was like over time in my time with him mm -hmm. just brought clarity to the confusion. And it was almost just like, that sin and that desire like the more I, des I ran after God and desired mm. God and, and it was because I was really pressing into him and struggling with like more of like my identity at the time because it, it was rooted in my eating disorder and then depression mm. and then cutting started mm. it was very like it was just like the Lord through his word just brought clarity over time like it wasn't honestly like a moment or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is why I say the word is so important you know and Amen. it's mm. so like um it's just so powerful. And so, Amen. yeah, but there wasn't like a moment. It was just like mm -hmm. a, like over time. And to be honest with you, the enemy will still give me very disgusting dreams at nighttime mm -hmm. where I wake up where I'm being violated by a woman mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. um, it's like, I have a really dirty dream with that stuff, you know, just like images of the pornography I used to watch and I have to mm -hmm. wake up and I just go straight into the word every morning. Mm -hmm. And I just have Amen. to like say, God just bathe my mind in the word. Amen. So that's so, that will always be because I lived with my abuser for a couple of years recently, wow. you know, and so wow. just and me having to live with them. It's like reliving those images daily it's always in your face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so and I have moved out last October Thousand Oaks, which is why I'm not in that situation anymore. But it is very um, the enemy will always try to come after me with that, you know, so mm -hmm. it's like a battle. Like it's not like a one moment in whatever it's just constant, you know, so. Mm -hmm. I like how you said the importance of like the word and also going to church because mm. that's where it's like you need to be around those godly brothers and sisters Amen. who you can see their life and you're like, oh, wow. Like they, because sometimes we can compare like, oh, well, their life's perfect. They don't have anything. But I think what we always tell people is that it's so important to be honest and real with these kids mm. of your past because if they think, oh, well, your life's perfect and you don't have to go through any hard thing. But what I am realizing, like with this one girl, I was able to just share my past and what I struggled with mm -hmm. and I had opened up. And then um, for me, I, I was like, it's mine's not a big thing because I grew up in a Christian home where I wasn't even, even if I like wanted to, which, you know, you people are like interested. So they'll look at pornography. We had so many safeguards in our home and like things that I, I couldn't. And so I'm like, praise God for that. But then there were things where I would then I would start like looking at people like YouTube and then like people kissing and like all that stuff. And then I remember getting I was I always talk about this and people are like, why are you talking about this? This is so gross. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, even the Bible says Second Timothy 222 is my favorite verse, but it says 
flee from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Yeah. And so I started getting that feeling when I would like work out and stuff. And so I was like, I knew that that was like pleasuring yourself. And so mm. I knew that that was wrong, but I would continue to do that. And so I, cause growing up as a girl, like I didn't know girls struggle with that. I thought that was only things guys struggle with. Like you had to be looking at pornography and then you would masturbate. Like I was like, guys did that, but girls didn't. So I opened up to this girl like, hey, and and that was the Holy Spirit. I'm like, I didn't want to. This girl's too young. Like, why am I telling her this? And I told her and she opened up to me that her sibling had raped her mm. and he mm. had shown her pornography and he said, this is what I'm going to do to you. No. And so then she started getting into like looking at lesbian porn and like all that stuff. And wow. I I was then overwhelmed. Like, what do, what do I do? Like, I... I don't want to do so I was able to like bring that up to her parents because I didn't I don't even know they didn't even know and so like it was crazy but I'm like that step of faith of like me being vulnerable and opening up thinking oh that's not gonna matter like I didn't I've never done like a really what the world has a big sin like I've never really like done that stuff or like kissed anyone or like but God's been convicting me he's like Mariah just one sin that isn't confessed like you need to confess those sins and 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 bring them in the light and so what would you even say because the same thing with those girls that have been abused um Mm -hmm. they're the people who abuse them a lot of times they've been abused and then there's things that they do after that so that girl she then was struggling with like being not with other girls but very very boy crazy And Mm. then there's other stories I know of girls and like what you did, self-harm, cutting themselves, they become bulimic, anorexic. So Mm. what would you say, can you, or maybe not even what we say, can you share a little bit of how that was with, you know, your eating disorder? And then especially because this is a big thing that we've been dealing with at youth group is self-harm. Kids Mm. have been alone a lot of times, even adults, they've told me, I, I don't know a lot about like cutting and stuff, but they've told me that it feels like the same feeling of when they've had morphine. It's like the same Mm -hmm. feeling. Yeah. So can you explain like what that that coping what that coping is of that pain that they've been through and how to be delivered from that? Absolutely. You know, I think even um, even kind of just touching on the sexuality thing for a second. Like I know a lot of kids that I've met. You know, as we've toured, you know, at the whosoever's, we do a lot of churches and youth groups and all kinds of things and. I've had so many kids that are even like really good, like pastors kids or just like really homeschooled type kids, you know, (laughs) that are just like, even, you know, even like, um, my old church was at the Marietta Bible college and I did some chapels there for the girls. And anytime the girls would be struggling, they'd be like, Christina, can you come and do a Sunday night chapel? I'm like, I got you. You know, we just talked about all this stuff. And I remember there was, there was a Sunday. No, this was like a Sunday night that we did a girls chapel at Marietta Bible college. There was probably like, 400 girls that fall like, in that room. And I told the the Dean of students, you know, cause they were, they attended my church that were on, that was on campus at the time. And I just, and I just was like, I'm going to talk about all of it. They were like, please do. Cause we're, yeah. people are struggling. Mm. And so, you know, I talked about all of it, did, like masturbation, pornography, like all this stuff. Right. And so at the end it was just like, we had, I was like, literally like if you're, it was just such a raw conversation. I was like, if you're struggling with masturbation and pornography, come to the front. There was like 60 girls that came up, yeah. you know, it was just like the leaders. And then they're came shocked and, because they're like, I thought I was the only one because yeah, the church doesn't you know, talk about it. They're afraid. Yeah, we took, yeah, we took the shame off the table. And then I was like, mm-hmm. okay, like you guys go with these leaders over here. I was like, anyone struggling with cutting come front. There was like 30 girls. Mm-hmm. I was like, anyone wow. struggling with homosexuality or sexual confusion come up. There's like 40 more girls. Wow. And I had friends that had walked out of that. And I was like, okay, the cutting section's over here. You know, the <laughs> section's like over here. So they're and then, like, and all this stuff got brought to the light. And I'll never forget that Sunday night. But I remember there were so many kids, you know, these are really solid kids, right, at the Bible College. This was like back in 2017 was when this night was, that were like missionary kids, that were Mm. pastors, kids, homeschooled, that were just like Christina. I remember watching like gay porn or watching porn and then it went to this like scene of two girls and then I was turned on by that and I was confused like, oh, is that me? Like, am I gay now? You know what I'm saying? Mm. And and there's so many kids where because they get like, you know, turned on or whatever by a scene of two girls or two guys, it could be guys like with two guys, 
that they think that's who they are and the enemy yeah. will say like well now you like girls and then they go down this whole path yeah and after hooking up with a bunch of girls they're even more confused you know because yeah. it's so biologically unnatural yeah Amen. you know Amen. and so even when it comes to like that you know just knowing that for me like fasting and prayer really mm-hmm. broke the chains of pornography Amen. and masturbation mm-hmm. off my life. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah, Which is why now I'm very vigilant with the music I listen to, yes. mm-hmm. what I watch. Like mm-hmm. I do not put anything unclean before my eyes and ears because mm-hmm. of my past, mm-hmm. my sexuality was heightened for so long. So mm-hmm. I have to live very like clean. Mm-hmm. I live clean, like, you know, whatever, like I I yeah just because of my own and everyone is in a different place but that's for me you know what I've Amen. done with my life but even when it comes to like trauma like so many girls when they've been like raped or abused right it's like their control is taken from them mm-hmm. and they hate themselves so much and they feel dirty after so oftentimes because they already feel like trash yeah they take whatever they take and they hurt themselves through self-harm you know like mm-hmm. you're cutting themselves because for them, it's like, if you think of their lives as this beautiful art canvas, it's already been destroyed. So what's the point if I destroy it a little more, you know? Mm. So, mm. and when they do cut themselves, they get a high because it releases endorphins and it gives mm. them this escape. When mm. I would cut myself, I never felt the pain because wow. the emotional pain always outweighed the physical pain. Wow. And I remember like being in high school the first time I was cut when I cut myself and I tore up my arms and legs. And I remember those scars lasted for years. And I remember showing my youth pastor the next day at church, like at Harvest, my youth pastor was Steve Wilburn. And he was so, I mean, his wife walked me through so much and they're like, Christina, we love you. You're going to go on this youth trip. Like we're going to pour into you. And it was so awesome. But just with eating disorders and with cutting specifically with girls with trauma, it's like, a way of control, you mm. know, way of, if I can control my food, maybe I can get back that control. They mm. don't think that at the time, but that's just what happens. Yeah. And oftentimes girls, when they've been abused, they go to one or two ways. They go the way where they're very conservative with their body, which is what I was, you know, like I didn't give my body to multiple people mm. or they go the opposite direction. Kind of like what you said with that girl who's boy crazy. Yeah, See, they're like, Oh, it's already gone. So yeah. I might as well mm. get back that control. And exactly. oftentimes girls, sleeping around with a lot of boys sexting a lot of boys they're trying to gain back the control that was taken from them yeah Mm. straight to them and showing them you know that they're like everything that you probably already do their bodies are valuable god can work that you know and i was just processing today with my counselor i was you know of like you know when i get married one day because i have like when i gave my heart to the lord when i was young i said lord like i want my first to be my last like i want to save I would see my youth leaders and be like, Lord, like, I want a story like that. Like, I want a mm-hmm. court for the purpose of marriage. Like, I don't mm-hmm. casually date people. I never have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, but a part of me, even though I've saved myself, feels like, well, mm-hmm. even today, today I'm praying about this. Like, God, mm-hmm. well, is it gone? Mm-hmm. And the Lord said, no, I can restore all things. Like, the, cr- the cross redeemed everything you know Amen. there was nothing that god gave his life for that he hasn't redeemed he gave mm. everything so he can redeem everything mm. and so even knowing that my innocence my purity was restored my body was restored mm. even one of my best friends that lives in florida is a sex trafficking survivor wow and you know and god restored her mm. and she's not married with two beautiful kids and no one would ever know that about her story because of how what god's done amen so to every girl out there who has been you know raped or abused or abandoned or has had her heart broken that god can restore you like when you read ryan reese's book mm-hmm. it's a story that he was married to a stripper at some point yeah. in his mm-hmm. younger 20s right yeah she aborted three of his kids mm-hmm. and his wife now, Crystal was married at one point when she was in her younger 20s. Hmm. But on their wedding day, I was at their wedding like years ago. They waited till their wedding day to kiss. And you, it hmm. seemed like they were both blank slates when you saw them. Wow. Like, Praise you know God. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they, they had never been with anyone because that's what God does. Amen. So there's no, there's no one too filthy. There's no situation too broken that God can't cleanse and piece back. And so 
Mm-hmm. And I'm having to realize that daily yeah. as God's been yeah. stirring my heart for this is what I have for you in this season. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And we, we've been telling that to like different people have been asking us like, well, I was with a boyfriend, like my boyfriend for all these years and like I slept with him and I now want a godly man, but I just feel like, you know, was that it? Like when God, cause they, they know like in the moment, cause they were like, kind of Christians, but now they would say, like, I, I don't believe I was really even saved. But they're like, I, it was just so weird because there's moments where I'm like, I should stop. And they're like, they, then they get afraid, like, wait, does that mean, like, that was it? Like, now God doesn't have them. We're like, no, like, that's not how God is. He's not, like, grading on, oh, well, remember that one year <laughs> in 2018, I told you to stop and you didn't. Like, you're done. Mm-hmm. Like, all God's looking for is just that broken and humble, contrite heart, heart before yeah. him. Just humble. Yeah. And that's what... Like, yeah, if we're maybe uppity and thinking, like, of course God forgives me. Like, I'm awesome. Well, that's that's concerning. But yeah, it's when yeah. you really see these people that are really confused and really afraid. Like, will I ever get married? Like, have I gone too far? Or some people, like, they've gone so wild and crazy in Christ, and now they have STDs. Now they can't have kids. And I just love the stories where God, he really does redeem. And it's not about what is like going on now like god does heal he does deliver and i've seen so many stories of like things like that happening Mm -hmm. and it just makes me excited too to know that it's like we don't deserve anything Mm -hmm. like we We don't don't. deserve anything good anything that is good and perfect comes from above from him Mm -hmm. and you also had mentioned um now you really have to make sure that you you wash your mind with the word and uh, is it philippians 4 8 is it nine where it talks about think about things that are pure, lovely, mm-hmm. right? That's for mm-hmm. all of us. It doesn't matter if you have never looked at pornography, if you've never kissed mm-hmm. anyone. Like for me, my flesh can think, oh, like I I can be a little bit more edgy because I've never done that stuff. I'm like, but God always reminds me, Mariah, if you were in those places, like if you don't have the parents <laughs> you did have, yeah. you would have gone crazy <laughs> and wild. Yeah. And I know that. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I'm mm-hmm. thankful for parents that did ho- hold me accountable that loved me enough to keep me away from those things and i'm so yeah. thankful but at the same time i'm like that doesn't make it where i'm like oh i would never marry or date anyone that's ever had a past mm-hmm. i'm like no i am so filthy myself like girls are told oh there's nothing wrong with you and i want to talk about this too because like i've had like someone before in my past this guy that liked me and stuff and he had touched me and then he also had like videoed me like when I didn't know when I was in the bathroom like stuff like that and so I was violated and I went to the extreme you did too like very very conservative Mm -hmm. like turtlenecks and like (laughs) baggy pants and I was just I felt disgusting Mm -hmm. like I and it was hard too because for a season Mm -hmm. I I've been around him and I, it was just kind of what you went through, but not even like to that extreme. But that's why I want to tell girls, even if it's something like that where you weren't raped or like gone through it a lot, there's still this thing where you become, this might not be for you, but I'm just saying this for like other people. I started becoming a victim oh, and I sure. stayed in that. Mm-hmm. Like I was just, I would sin or something happened, but like, oh, I did that because of what happened to me. Hmm. And, and then when there were things where God's like, no, that's just because you're you're not really close to me like you're not really intimate with me and in, in the word and you don't really have personal relationship that's why you're sinning and like being disrespectful to your parents yeah. or lying or deceiving mm-hmm. and so i if you could just talk a little bit about that because knowing like my dad what really helped me is that he would tell me like mariah you need to learn to talk to god mm-hmm. because i would always want to talk to a guy or to my dad and until I could be intimate with God in Matthew 7, that gnosko's depart from me, I never knew you. Mm-hmm. That's intimacy like a man knows his wife. Like that's yeah. how intimate we should be. But I was trying to find it in everything else. And I started being like, woe is me. Like this happened to me and I have to be around him. But can you share the difference? My, my dad told me like, no, you're victorious in Christ. Like Christ paid for it and he's your lover. Yeah. He's your friend. So can you share how to get out of maybe like the victim mentality if you have been harmed or something has happened to someone? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think the victim mentality, like even last year, 
like a week before I left to go on Mm -hmm. a week and a half tour, you know, through Idaho and Montana with our team. Like I remember it was actually a a Sunday. So I, I was going to leave on a Friday and it was on a Sunday that, um, I was on my way back from LA from a photo shoot and all day I just had this crazy thought, you know, just from the enemy that I was going to get raped. I don't know what it Mm -hmm. was, just Mm -hmm. crazy thoughts. And I was like, Lord, this is not of you. Hmm. And, um, I was like, even in Santa Monica in a nice area, it wasn't even like, and I go to LA all the time for shoots and stuff. So it's not even like, and we go to sketchy areas. So I'm yeah. kind of like vigilant in that way. Like I don't have hmm. those thoughts often. And I just was like, I don't know what this is. And then when I, um, on the way home, I just called my dad. I was like, Hey, I'm 10 minutes out, you know, I'll be home soon, whatever. And he just was, he told me that this family member that had, you know, violated me growing up was sleeping on the streets of downtown LA. Hmm. Um, She's currently in a homosexual marriage, you know, and I guess something happened so that they were going to invite her to live back in our house. She's heavily Hmm. involved in witchcraft. It was just like this whole thing. Hmm. And I told my dad, I said, but you said that you would never invite her back in. Like you said Hmm. that. Me and my house will serve the Lord, you know, because mm. she's doing she's in higher up witchcraft, not even just normal wow. stuff. This is like hot, like higher up stuff, dude, just really gnarly. Right. Oh and um, I was like, dude, you don't want to mess around with that, dude, yeah. you know. And so yeah. um, and so I remember I just was just kind of like, OK, like, because what am I supposed to say? So when I got home that day, I basically ended up staying at a friend's house for a couple of days. And mind you, I'm leaving on tour that Friday and I'm just trying mm. to figure out, like, what the heck is happening? And I remember I stayed at a couple of my friends' houses and they said, you need to be honest with your dad and you, it's time for you to go. And the Lord was like, mm. but God speak on my heart. And it was just like, Christina, mm. like, you need to pack as though you'll never, you're never going to come back. Wow. And so I had a suitcase. I packed a lot of stuff for my tour. Um, I told my dad, I'm not coming back. And mm. he basically said, well, just because it makes you feel uncomfortable that mm. she's here, like, you know, you're just going to have to deal with it basically. Mm. So mm-hmm. that was what he said before I left for my friend's house. So when I got back from my friend's house, like right before I left, I told him, I said, I'm moving out. I said, the day you said that to me was the day that our, um, our friendship ended. You know, I said, we no longer have a relationship because what father tells their daughter that they have to cope with living with their rapist, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I could send this family member to jail for the rest of their life, but they've yeah. so, they're so messed up. They've been in and out of jail for their whole lives to begin with and not rehab. I honestly just pray for their deliverance, you know, yeah, like amen. they're just so like, I'm just like, Lord, I've forgiven them, but I'm just mm-hmm. like, obviously I don't want to be around them. And so amen. I remember when I went on tour and then when I moved to thousand Oaks, God, I never had to go back to my house. I only had to go back to get some more of my stuff. Mm-hmm. But I remember for like probably last year, like in like November and December, probably October, November, December, I really struggled with a victim mentality, you know, mm-hmm. and only in the sense of just being like, um, you know, the enemy was just coming after me with like, you're filthy, you're trash, you're not worth fighting for, like, mm-hmm. you know, like no one to the point where like it, it, it acted out in my actions where I would like be afraid to just reach out to people to hang out. So Mm -hmm. I wouldn't reach out to people because the enemy was just like, well, who would want to hang out with you? Your own family didn't want you. Mm -hmm. Or like just in different things, you know, like we're even just walking into like church, you know, just being like, oh, like I just would sit in the back, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it it acted out in my actions in that way where I just became withdrawn. And of course, my whosoever team was like keeping me on track. I had people in my life that were very vigilant that were like meeting up with me. Mm -hmm. But I really felt like it was just kind of like, I was just like, God, why? Like there was days I would go to the park and I just would lay in the grass and just weep because Mm -hmm. I just was like, Lord, I've never felt like such trash in my life, you know, Mm -hmm. that my own family who I've given everything to and have loved, you know, my mom's whole family lives in Corona within Mm -hmm. a 10 mile radius of each other. So I really lost like so much because I had lost everything in Pottersfield the year before. So my family was really like everything to me. But during that time, God really just began to teach me that he was enough for me, Amen. that he fights for me, that I, when all you have left is Jesus, mm. he, you will realize that, that he's all you need. Like Amen. my favorite, one of my favorite books is by George Mueller. You know, mm-hmm. he was like yes. a missionary and yep. I remember, and, and I've had this saved on my phone for the, as a screensaver, like for the last <laughs> 
three years, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's basically just a quote where George Mueller was talking about how he was like 90 something. And it says that at the end of his life, he said, you know, I've buried, you know, he basically said, Lord, I've buried my wives and my children, but you alone are left. Mm -hmm. But I'm never lonely nor desolate with you and your smile, which is better than life. Mm -hmm. And I just Mm -hmm. love that because Mm -hmm. it was like God invited me into a place of deep suffering and loss. And it was there that I experienced him in a way that I don't think I would have experienced him if I wouldn't have been in that valley, you know? Mm. And so really God, like I had people in my life and that's where staying in community. Amen. I have people in my life that won't let me like Mm -hmm. go dark in the sense of like where Mm -hmm. I'm shutting off my phone. Like people will show up at my house. Like I have those kinds of people in my life, which is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like I had people where I would go down the track of like, well, woe is me and I've lost everything. And, they just would remind me not like, you know how Job's friends are like curse God and die. I have yeah, friends that are yeah. like, yeah. They're like mm. Christina, God's brought you to a good church and mm. you have an amazing ministry you serve Amen. with and look at your home and God's mm. blessed you with all these things. So when I would try mm. to go down that path, they would point me back to the word and what God done. Amen. And so really that victim mentality is just like you being honest before the Lord, but there does come a point where the Lord like pick up your mat and walk. Amen. Yeah. And Amen. Good. I was listening to like a message by Ken Graves like earlier on this week. He's an amazing mm-hmm. guy. You know, Ken Graves from Calvary. Yeah, yeah, he's a man. Yeah, he has this identity series. And mm-hmm. I think it's like identity part four in his series. He talked about the life of Joseph and how Joseph, mm-hmm. abandoned by his family, wronged in Potiphar's house. When he interprets a dream for a guy in jail, he was like, don't forget me when you go to Pharaoh's house. This guy yeah, forgets him. <laughs> <laughs> but he it's like, but Joseph never allowed his circumstance to define his identity. Amen. If anyone could be a victim, it was Joseph. But he oh, said, yeah. but it was like when Joseph was standing before his brothers, he said, God allowed what you did to me so that the gl- his glory can be revealed through my Amen. life. Amen. And so mm-hmm. Joseph had like a victorious mentality. And I just was so encouraged by that message. And I was like, Lord, yeah. Because some of that still lingers to this day, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, where... I have not seen my father in four months. Like I mm. don't go to my parents' house yeah. and the Lord has to mm. remind me, like I place the lonely in families and Amen. Amen. so regardless, cause who is it that abuses kids, the closest people to them, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Babysitters, like people at, you know, school, like family members. And so oftentimes when that happens, a big part of their identity could be stripped mm. from them of like, yeah. you know, and so it really is, just reminding them that even though their physical family might have dropped the ball, that God placed that's what church is for and family's Amen. for. Amen. Group, you know? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's probably what I would say. That's good. That that's is good. so good. I think yeah. um, I love that you mentioned this because I actually was just talking to a friend yesterday, a friend in Christ who is struggling with sexual sin. And um, we were just talking through um, just this idea that. Uh, she says, you know, she said, sometimes it feels like I can't get out of this because of either what's happened to me in the past or what I opened doors to. It feels like um, I'll always struggle with this. And I just feel like she she said she just felt bound to the sin. And I mentioned um, kind of what you were talking about, that um, in Christ, we're free. And so our deliverance happened on the cross. Yes, there are. We need to be delivered per- continually from the the repercussions of our sins, oftentimes, things like that. But um, the Lord set his people free on the cross. And I think I love what you were talking about, because I feel like we need to, as believers, um, and I, I think I've heard this quote somewhere, so not to sound cheesy, but we should operate or fight from a point of victory and not victimhood. Amen. So sometimes we yeah. fight from victimhood, like, oh, when God, when are you going to save me from this? When are yeah. you going to take this away? When are you going to blah, 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 blah? He acted. And um, scripture says um, that through him, we are more than conquerors. And I just wanted to read Romans 8, um, 31 through 39. And it says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, um, for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring a charge against those whom God has chosen? And I think that even includes us. So our own thoughts, our own mind. Um, It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died 
Um, No one, Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Mm -hmm. As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And so I love that because um, the beginning of Romans 8 begins by saying there is now no longer any condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that's the point where we um, need to live from that's what we need to walk out that's what we need to um, that's the identity like you're talking about the identity that we should operate from so as long as we know that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus through him we are more than conquerors not any of us have uh, resisted I think this is in Hebrews to the point of shedding blood we've not any of us have resisted temptation to the point of shedding blood and that Jesus is um, a great high priest who sympathizes with our weakness because he himself has been tempted in every respect like we're not alone in this and I love what you're saying about being diligent to guard your heart and mind with what you watch and what you listen to like we can't just be sitting here like helpless Uh, victims and saying, Jesus, rescue me, save me from this, while we're putting ourselves in situations that can cause us to fall. Like Mariah said, 2 Timothy 2.22, flee from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Like the Lord always provides a way of escape. And it's just, are we going to believe that? Or are we going to act like, you know, this is just it for us. This is my law in life. So that's a good great thing and even just speaking about like the family thing that you're talking about, because we both experienced it with like our families too like people get mad at our families because we say like there's the verses that talks about in Luke 8:21 and then Mark 3:35 and it says um whoever does the will of God um whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother so for us like it's not your blood family that's like oh and that's hard like you mm-hmm. said that growing up in the Hispanic culture, they're mm-hmm. like, no, like we're going to defend them to the end. Familia. Like there are, yeah, familia. Mm-hmm. My family's Italian. They're the same way. But it's like, we say, we say family, yeah, family first is a lot, what a lot of times people say, unless it has to do and it messes up with integrity. So if it's something mm-hmm. that, where it's something that's a sin, no, it's not because your family, now everything is fine. And that's why, like you said, our, the church is the family. Those who do the yeah. will of God, mm-hmm. not those who are like, oh, well, I raised you after all I did for you. It's like, mm-hmm. but yeah, God has people there for a season, but that doesn't yeah. mean that you have to be okay with what is continually happening. And I've seen parents knowingly, they know that someone has hurt their daughter or son and they still let that the person in their life. And we yeah. have always said, why is that person in their life? They need to leave because it's still mm-hmm. affecting them. But even that that yeah. young person, I don't want to get specific, but that young person is fine with it. They're like, but she's fine with it or they're fine with it. And it's like, it doesn't matter if you think they're fine with it. It's really, it is more Protection. of a spiritual side of it too. And that's why, like, yeah. I, like you said, they are opening the door, I believe, to the demonic. Like I believe you can open doors to demonic. Oh, we had Stephen sure. Bancars on and stuff like that. And a lot of it too, we realize. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Like, you're not wrestling against the person who did that against you. Mm. They are being, they're being, like, just a used or a vessel of the enemy to, like, do these things. Yeah. And so when we're just like, oh, no, it's fine. Like, they didn't mean it. But those people are still in that sin or witchcraft or the demonic or weird new age stuff. Mm-hmm. We can't be around it. Mm-hmm. And especially mm-hmm. young children. I have, we've had young children. And I'll let you talk. I know I'm talking a lot. But. No, you're they good. have had homosexual family members in their house and they haven't said this is wrong. They just said we have to love them. Mm-hmm. And then we see their 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 children now. Two out of the three are flaming like homosexual, transgender, um, what is it, drag queens. And then the other one's struggling with it. And I don't know if they are fully, but I'm praying that they don't get into that. But my dad was saying like a little leaven, a little sin like it really does spread, especially yeah. if you're, you, I mean, if you're around them and you're making it clear to your kids, like this is wrong, mm-hmm. this is against, but when you're saying, cause the, the family would say, oh no, she's not a Christian. And my dad asked the person, Hey, are, do you believe that you're going to heaven? Do you believe that you're Christian? Oh yeah. I'm a homosexual Christian. And I'm like, 
that's what we need to get away from is families yeah. protecting because your blood yeah. we have to keep yeah. it it's like no who's my mother who's my brother those who do the will of god if mm-hmm. you're not we can mm-hmm. love you you know where we are but especially as children and even adults we're so vulnerable already to them mm-hmm. i mean why are we just letting our hair down with these people mm-hmm. who are saying 100%. they're christians because we can judge the mm-hmm. world but but we can't judge yeah. the world but those who are saying i'm a christian homosexual i'm mm-hmm. a christian fornicator like mm-hmm. i'm a you yeah. can't do that so yeah. what would you say with the family thing because that's what you're going yeah. through right now so yeah like honestly like even that like ministers to me you know because like like so much like i'm like here getting like teary-eyed because i'm you know even with my parents and this family member like i remember the first time because i was quarantined with them last year you know mm-hmm. and um like this family member and they left at one point you know to be with their like quote-unquote wife or whatever and like i but i remember the time that i was with them like late at night dude watching like homosexual movies and mm-hmm. hearing it you know what i'm yeah. saying and mm-hmm. And the demonic stuff they're involved in, like I would wake up and there was demonic stuff happening in my room. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I won't get in details, but it was gnarly. Yeah. And I felt the darkness always. Um, and so it just was very, um, yeah, it just was really crazy. And so I remember even with like my parents, like when this family member left at the beginning of like March, um, the biggest thing was that like they, you know, my dad was just like, you know, we, we recognize that we can't allow sin in the house and witchcraft and all this stuff. And they went on this whole thing, right. They anointed the house. They Mm -hmm. did all this stuff. But then when push comes to shove, it's like, they, it's just ping ponging back and forth. Mm -hmm. His family members always Mm -hmm. in and out. And it was like, and I held my dad accountable, you know, like I genuinely, like when I came back from my friend's house, I sat with my dad to have a very adult conversation, which I don't think I've really ever had this strong of a conversation with my dad. It was just very like chill, even kill. But I just told him like, you are not protecting this family yeah. from the enemy that mm-hmm. is coming in this, in the whole sense of homosexuality and sin, you know, of witchcraft oh, yeah. of, of drugs. Mm-hmm. Cause he basically told me like, well, this family member, I told them no girlfriends, which is her wife, no drugs, no witchcraft. Right. That night that I came home before I left for tour, I hear her on the phone with her quote unquote wife reading a witchcraft book. Uh, I go in the bathroom. It smelled like weed. So the three things I'm like, she's laughing in your face, mm, dude. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, and honestly, this entire several months that I've moved out, my parents have told me we've experienced a lot of infirmities in our Mm. house. Yeah. Wonder why. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? We've experienced a lot of darkness. We've experienced all this stuff. And I, I've constantly told them. They're like, well, God's protected us. It's like, no, light and darkness cannot coexist in the same place. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it's like, you know, mom was bedridden. Dog has, is ridden with all these infirmities. Like house is very dark. Mm -hmm. I went back on a day to, um, move some of my stuff out. I had a panic attack because I was like, whatever is in this house is not of the Lord. Mm. Like it was just like really dark, you know? And I was like, I'm out dude. Yep. So I told them like, I will not go back because I will. And I did not spend Christmas with them. I did mm. not spend Thanksgiving with them. I did not spend mother's day with my mom. Mm. If I see them, I meet them halfway in orange County because I will not go to a place and open yourself up and open myself up exactly. to, to the darkness. And I regularly with the whosoever's, we regularly pray for demonic possession to go out of people. We regularly yeah. pray for whatever. But one of my good friends that I went to India with, she prays with me once a week. And she said, Christina, they're literally allowing demons to live in their house rent free. Mm. Yeah. That's what they're doing, you know? And so I think like with people, it's like when you say me and my house will serve the Lord, it's like, you know, in the time of like, you know, the Egyptians, you know, when they did the whole Sabbath thing, they put the blood of the lamb around the doorpost so that the spirit of death didn't go in, you know, to kill the firstborn, obviously, you Mm -hmm. know, the angel, whatever. But it was like, it was a, it was a, representation that it's been covered by the blood Amen. and if your house has been covered by the blood and it's like the demons are swept out and if the house is not put in order mm-hmm. what does it say it'll come back come seven back times seven worse times. i believed it's come back i believe in my parents house it's come back seven times yeah. worse yeah and so it's like to families it's like no dude you you can love that person from afar but yeah. you do not allow them amen. to live in your house amen mm-hmm. not you know, have fellowship. You mm-hmm. do not, you know, it's, 
it's like when you stand with the Lord, it's like Christ ate with the sinners to bring them into the kingdom, Amen. but you do not go and participate yes. in what in their lifestyles, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I'm very like with that stuff because yeah. it's like, it's the gospel, Amen. you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so, and in our culture now, people want to have this like relative Christianity, yeah. but the gospel has been so watered down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but it's true because a lot of these families, they are just being nice instead of being kind and speaking the truth. Like when Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace but a sword, Mm -hmm. he's talking about families like mothers against their daughters and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Because in Christ, we should, it almost seems like we hate them. The Bible says, like, in comparison, in comparison to how much we love God, it should seem like that. So I'm thankful that we can have that that discussion because that's something that a lot of people don't believe in. But yeah. mm-hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to share, because I know that we're running out of time and you have to go, but we'll have to have you on again because yeah. I would love to yeah. hear more about your yeah. story. But so what are you doing now with the whosoever's? You've done a TED Talk. Um, you're a model mm-hmm. and you're yeah. author, speaker. So what are you doing? What are you doing now? Yeah. So right now um, with the whosoever's, I've been a part of, I've been a part of these wars for the last several years and I'm one of our ambassadors. So oftentimes when we get booked for tours, like I get sent in an area, you know, like leading a team and we usually will do like two or three events a day, sometimes Mm -hmm. for a week straight, you know? And then, um, I was supposed to be in Arkansas with our team this weekend, but I'm planning our tour out here in LA with Mm -hmm. in the thousand Oaks with my church. So I stayed back to plan that we have it in a few weeks. And so, um, so yeah, doing that, like with tours, serving at my local church. Um, I love my church doing stuff at, you know, with the modeling industry, I do a lot of speaking stuff, even outside of like our whosoever events. And so, um, but honestly, mostly it's just been a season where God has really just, it's been a, a huge season of just like rest and healing, mm-hmm. like just being, and like, I rent this really cute cottage from this couple at the church so I have my own place mm-hmm. and then I have like my horse so I spend a lot of time doing that mm-hmm. and so um yeah it's been honestly just a beautiful season of just having some really good time with the Lord and really good healing moments with my horse and just like learning how to just be a, a, like even with my horse right my horse used to be a race horse and mm-hmm. he only ever knew how to run really fast mm-hmm. and that's all he knows how to do but during this time I've had him, I've rehabbed him and he's just learned how to be a horse again. Mm-hmm. And God brought him into my life because even with, with me, it's like, I just needed to learn how to just be a daughter of God again, mm-hmm. apart from like trying to escape and run and battle all the time. Yeah. So it's been a really cool season. I've said no to a lot um, and said, and I've said yes to rest mm-hmm. and, you know, restoration in the Lord. And mm-hmm. so I'm kind of coming out of a heavy season of rest into a heavy season of battle, but it's from a place of like a solid foundation more than a crumbling foundation. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, and yeah, you know, the battle is is crazy, but it's, um, I believe that revival is on the horizon, you know, Mm -hmm. and that God is about to pour out his spirit. And a lot of people have been praying about that. So I'm really Mm -hmm. excited to see what the Lord's going to do. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, any closing thoughts for our listeners before, before you go? Yeah. Um, you know, I just would say, continue to stay in the word every single day. Amen. Don't let it be something you do once a week, yeah. stay in the word, stay in prayer, mm-hmm. stay plugged into Bible studies, yeah. into community at church. Um, are, and, uh, and me asking people, are you being discipled? Are mm-hmm. you discipling yeah, someone? And are you being discipled? Amen. Because that is going to be how we raise up our future generation longevity. You know, they don't need a watered down gospel mm-hmm. Christianity and be, and don't be afraid to be vigilant with people mm-hmm. in preaching the truth. Amen. Cause I, this, that's what this generation is looking for, which is why I'm sure you've seen a growth in your youth. Yep. Cause people are hungry. Yeah. They're hungry for bread. Mm-hmm. They're hungry for solid food and, um, and give it to them, mm-hmm. you know? So that would be my biggest. Amen. Thing. Amen. And then yeah. where can they find you really quick and any resources that yeah. you give them? Um, so, you guys can like um, find us on like the whosoever's Mm -hmm. um, also like my Instagram. Um, That's kind of like the place I would say the two places right now. Perfect. And we'll have that in the description below, but Christina, thanks so much for joining us. We had a blessed time with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So honored. Thank you. Bye you guys. Bye. Bye. So we're just going to extend this a little more because Christina had to go because she had to be somewhere at church. 
But Mireya, <laughs> she really had to go when uh, Christina was talking about, we were talking about like the demonic and how you can open the doors. Mireya's over here like bouncing. Shaking, she acting, had to go possessed. to the bathroom yeah, so bad. Had to go to she has a huge gallon of water bottle. So <laughs> that might be TMI, but I just thought that was funny. You gotta go, you gotta you go. You gotta go, you gotta go. So we had to pause it. But there was some other stuff that we wanted to talk about. And I wanted to mention, because we were talking a lot about the family thing of who's my mother, who's my brother, those who do the will of God, and just encouragement for people. Because if you have family members that you know are saying they're Christian and they're not really obeying the word of God, that you shouldn't you shouldn't be around them. Like you can love them, let them know, but especially around your young children because it really does confuse them. And Satan's the father of confusion. Mm -hmm. And so what we tell people is, yeah, maybe that's not in the world's eyes loving, but it really is. That's how Jesus, that's how he responded to things that people were in sin. If you see that in two, and right Matthew 18, mm -hmm. where it talks about um, church discipline. Mm -hmm. It says to remove that person from mm -hmm. among you. Mm -hmm. And then if they really want truth, restore them back. Don't be like, if they're really restore saying, hey, I'm broken, then yes, mm -hmm. restore them back. Mm -hmm. But we really have to make distinctions. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know that seems kind of cruel and harsh, but in Christ, we should be set apart. Mm -hmm. What does light have in common with darkness? Amen. Nothing. And um, I also wanted to just read the verse because I butchered it before. Mm -hmm. I said 1 Corinthians 7. I love 1 Corinthians 7. But 1 Corinthians 6, starting in verse 9. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor adulterers, <laughs> idolaters mm -hmm. nor idolaters nor men who practice homosexuality nor thieves nor the greedy nor drunkards nor revilers nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of god and such were some of you this is the verse that we always quote at our church such were some of you used to be a homosexual used to be a fornicator used to be a drunkard but you were washed you were sanctified you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. Mm -hmm. So there is hope. There's hope if you're struggling with any of those things out there or you have family members. Don't feel like, oh, they're a lost cause. So you're saying I'm never going to see them. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing you can do. And we don't really trust now the power of prayer. Like God would really do something. But it's mm -hmm. true. Like it's not our job to save someone. The Holy Spirit needs to convict them. Mm -hmm. But when the Holy Spirit speaks to you to maybe call them. Or maybe meet with them. Make sure that you're not just, you know, letting your hair down, being comfortable and getting advice from yeah. people who are in sin. Yeah. You really you really need to speak the truth. Like, give them the verses mm -hmm. that you know that they're going to be offended by. But if it's the word of God, then I'm, I'm sorry, but it's the word of God. They can't really get offended. But do you have anything yeah. with that with family or maybe just being a new creation because we were talking about that or anything yeah. else that we kind of missed that we wanted to end with what we're talking about with Christina I think off of that um, a lot of times uh, it's also it's not just damaging to believers but I think to keep around and keep continue fellowshipping and walking with um, people that are in blatant sin <clears throat> it's also damaging to that person yeah, um, yeah. It, it hinders the possibility of them coming to Christ when they think it's okay to continue to live the way they live and still be in fellowship with believers and partake in things that are you know they're set apart just for Christians and it's like first Corinthians 5. I think it's five five, where Paul says um, to turn over the person, send them over to Satan, so for the destruction of their flesh. It sounds harsh, but yeah. that is so why, so that they may be saved Amen. in the day um, of Christ. And Amen. then um, it's like Amos three three. How can two walk together unless they've agreed upon the destination or where to go? Um, it's just fellowship with darkness and light. It's not possible. So you're compromising on your end. And then also it does affect that person as well. There's confusion about who God is, that he's okay with sin or that he's okay with um, the way they're behaving and um, to call yourself to bear the name of Christ and to continue to live in a way that dishonors that name is just, it's confusion um, or it's confusing. So not just, it's not just bad for, you know, us as believers, but also for the person person who is lost so yeah, that's yeah. Good. yeah and that's what she was talking about was first corinthians 5 mm -hmm. which is right before first corinthians 6 and yeah. then 7 mm -hmm. but i encourage you guys to read that because it really explains it i was kind of meshing matthew 18 with first corinthians 5 but we all we know that 
Jesus was not PC. Mm -hmm. He was JC, Jesus, correct? And (laughs) we don't want to be PC in this world where they're saying, oh, boys can be girls and then girls can be boys and and all this stuff. That's not true. That's not biblical. And Mm -hmm. Christ can deliver you. And we might have another episode on that. We don't have really that much time to get in. But Christina also believes that, you know, you need deliverance, mm-hmm. that you can't, that there are things and sins that open the door to the demonic. Mm-hmm. And a lot of Christians just don't want to like believe in the supernatural or spiritual realm, you know, that, that there, there is like two different, there's light and dark, you know, there's the angels, demons, mm-hmm. all that stuff. And I think people get afraid of it, mm-hmm. but we don't have to be afraid of it because we do have power to be aware. in the name of Jesus, mm-hmm. but we can't just be saying, oh, in the name of Jesus, be gone. But then like Mireya is saying, we're opening the doors to it ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's where we re- really need to make, be in the church, be getting accountability. Like mm-hmm. Christina was talking about some, th- some things we should not be listening to mm-hmm. or watching or being around certain people or environments. And that's counting the cost. The Bible talks about that. But it's so much more important to count the cost here than to hear depart from me. I never knew you. And we don't want to we don't want to be like, oh my goodness, didn't I do this, God? Didn't I do this? Mm-hmm. Like it says in Matthew seven, depart from me, I never knew you. Those who I mm-hmm. think it says practice lawlessness. Yep. Or, yeah, it is. So anyway, I know we talked a lot, but again, we're just reminding people that we are not pastors. <laughs> <laughs> We are not pastors. Um, Morgan is going to watch this before this Pastor Morgan or Kevin. And yeah, we just really are excited to pour into the youth at our church. If you guys have any youth, ages or grade 6 through 12, they can come to the Cove, Calvary Valley evenings is what we call it, the Cove, our youth group. We meet um, the first and third uh, Friday of every month from 6 to 8. So you guys can contact us on our social media or on um, calvaryov at calvaryov.org. You can email us and we love to pour into your kids, but it's also not about that. The parents need to do their job Hmm. and to lead by example. Mm -hmm. So anyway, thanks so much for joining us. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us and see our behind the scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. Thanks so much to our sponsors, Mission Heating and Cooling. It's getting hot out there, so if you guys need AC or AC fix, please check them out. They'll be in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.